kino7.de Es geht los mit Cam Gigande, er spielt Jack the Barkeeper. Herzlichen Dank. Als nächstes die bezaubernde Cher. Me, it, was, it was probably the perfect movie for me to come back. 
Thank you. The gentleman all the way in the back on the right side. Hey, this is Manuel Pablo from Munich, Radio Syndication. Uh, this is kind of a following question. Uh, was it a big difficulty when you sing in a movie and don't they have the reactions of the, of the, like being at stage, you see the people cheering? This is something different. How did you dealt with that kind of issue? Which one of these? I bet we're going to the same answer. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, I'm sure that Christina's going to say the same thing. When it's like doing a video where you have it inside of you. You know, it's nice to have the applause, but if you're acting, if you can act and you can sing, and, and I think when most singers are doing a video, they are, they are acting, but you know, you just put your, I mean, it's acting, it's acting, and, but you're just not talking acting, you're singing acting. So it's not, it's not difficult at all. What do you say? Probably less difficult for you. <laughs> um, I, whenever I do videos though, everything sort of, um, because I write the material and everything, it comes from a very self-expressive place. And you have to find the honesty somewhere else when you're acting. So I find that I end up neglecting myself as a person whenever I ventured into doing this movie because I wanted everything to come from Ali's point of view. Kristen and Cam, this is a question to the, both of you. Um, one amazing thing about this movie is uh, the set pieces. You know, the rich environment in which you shot the movie. I would like to know what it was like to step on set for the first time, what you thought, especially about your costumes. And Cam, you came from a different set, from pretty stuff, in a western outfit, killing zombies. So what was that transition like? Maybe starting with Kristen first. Uh, the, I mean, the set design and everything involved in the burlesque club was one of the most spectacular things I've ever seen. When I first stepped on set and Stephen gave me a tour, I was I felt like I was completely transported, and that's kind of how it felt every day because there, there's so much light and beauty, and and, and there isn't a detail uh, that that is missed in the burlesque club, and it's it really feels like a completely different world. And to come to that every day and then call it work was um, kind of a nice feeling. Uh, I was, I think, nervous a little bit about my costumes initially, but um, then slowly but surely became more and more comfortable with wearing them and now I um, now I love them and I want them back. Um, yeah, the same. I had the same experience. It made our job so much easier because it was so easy to you know, dive into these characters because you know you can't help but feel something different. And uh, I actually didn't tell anyone but I would walk around with my camera and I'd be taking pictures because there's so many details and it's it's even bigger than this place. And I would walk around taking pictures of the, oh, the lights there and the mirrors there. It was just unreal. And uh, yeah, so it was, it was very different walking you know, from one set to the other. And I mean, I, my jobs were even overlapping at times. And you know, it kind of, you know, as difficult as it could be, it actually made so much sense because I knew the entire time that this was the right choice just because of the leap that I actually had to take. And, uh, and so, there you go. Thank you. Question from the lady over on the left hand side. Hi, my name is Paula Bus from Radio Berlin. Christina, how did you feel in your costumes? There were even more, maybe, or less. Um, um, yeah, well, there was some comedy infused in some of my costumes for the Pearl outfit, for one. Um, that had some humor to it as it kept slipping away from my body. Um, but I, for one, and I think it's been apparent in my videos and my music, that I'm always very comfortable in my own skin, in my own body. I think that doing this film um, was something that truly empowered me as a woman. And in turn, I really wanted to empower others to you know, not feel shame in your body or your sensuality as a woman, and rather to exude it in a very powerful way. So I'm, I mean, I'm, I love being a girly girl. I love the makeup, I love the hair, I love playing dress up, and um, this movie gave me the opportunity to do it in such a theatrical way. Stephen, we've been talking about Shao returning to the big screen. To what lengths did you have to go to convince her to come back? And to stalk her, <laughs> which I did. Um, you know, it's, um, it was tough to get Sherry to say yes. <laughs> And, um, you know, I made a commitment to um, not take no for an answer. 
and she didn't know that, but I think she became aware of that after a certain point. But um, I mean, sure, you know, can speak to this as well. Um, but you know, at first, you know, I think she was mildly interested, and um, you know, it took a lot to get Sharon to say yes because she gets obviously a lot of offers, and Sharon didn't need burlesque. Burlesque needed share and wanted share. Um, and um, you know, it was it was an, it was an endless dog and pony show and tap dance. And I did many auditions, and um, I was really happy that she finally said yes. And foolishly, I didn't have a backup plan because I didn't want one. <laughs> I wanted share. So, um, and the same thing with Christina. You know, um, I didn't have a backup plan. I wanted Christina to play Allie, and the same thing with Cam. You know, Cam said no too. Cam was not interested in doing this movie. So happy that he did. And Kristen Bell was not so interested in playing <laughs> the role of Nikki. I everybody. But you know, it was I was new to the party. You know, this is an extraordinary cast, you know, so I was the, you know, really I was the new guy in town, you know. I mean, really I had yeah, everybody everybody took a chance on everything. You know, I really didn't take a chance on any of this extraordinary cast. I was blessed to work with, you know, these people, obviously. Um, and, you know, I think I did a pretty good job of convincing them. And I think I, you know, I delivered on my promise. We got a Golden Globe nomination for Best Picture. <laughs> Thank you. Gentlemen on the left-hand side with the uh, white. Hello, that's from Vesta Hall Radio WDR. It's live. A uh, question to Kristen Bell. Um, every actor wants to play the bad guys. Um, so you did in this movie, you were the villain, the opponent, and um, thanks for really making me hate Nikki. What, a, what an awful bitch. Thank you for that. Really good. So, uh, how was it, how was it uh, for you to play this character beside turning your hair from blonde to dark? Uh, well, it, uh, I did wear a wig. So it was kind of, um, it was fun to have this duplicitous lifestyle for the four months that we shot it. Coming to work, putting on a dark wig, and being the antagonist, and then coming home and um, being more good girl. I think I, one of the reasons I think that this movie scared me, and maybe I was a little bit trepidatious, but the, Stephen convinced me, is because it was kind of a departure. I'm a little bit more conservative and kind of, Happy in my lifestyle, so it, it scared me, which ended up being the reason that I wanted to do it. But um, playing the bad girl is a lot of fun. On the surface, it's fun because you get to be saucy with people like Cher and Christina and Cam and I didn't have any um, scenes together, but I've been plenty mean to him off camera, so I've covered it. Um, but at the same time, as an actor, it's actually more interesting because you have to believe every character you play, and you have to be able to defend them. You can't just play mean or evil. It just looks stupid and cartoonish. So as an actor, you have to figure out why does Nikki always feel threatened? Um, why do her claws come out? And Nikki's the kind of girl that, she's the little girl on the playground that is scared to death that her toys will be taken away. And she didn't maybe have the most loving of upbringings, and you know, we all kind of know those people in our life, and we know that they react to a lot more anger um, more quickly. And um, so it was, it had all the sort of nerdy actor book work involved that I really enjoy. Thank you. Christina, um, over here on your right side. Um, a question about the music that you wrote for Boles. Was it important for you to write three songs, and was it different to the stuff that you've written so far, you know, for an album? Um, well, in all honesty, um, you know, all the songs that were coming in for the movie sucked, and <laughs> I told I told Stephen I was like, I have to be involved in writing this music. I have such a love and a passion for throwback twenties, thirties, forties style inspired music. I did a whole album called Back to Basics that toyed around with modernizing old horn sounds and and. Uh, you know, combining the two into a modern day sort of twist, which I thought was perfect for this movie and the burlesque club. So um, I dove in, but I wrote the music not from my own, you know, standpoint. Um, 
or where I was at emotionally, but rather where the scene was at and what Ali was doing as a character. So um, it was important for me to stay true to that. So I wrote it from her point of view, not my own. But it was just important for me that the music was quality and um, that it was something that everyone could feel on a universal level. That for the up tempos, the bass was hitting hard. And, you really wanted to get up and dance with the girls, and for the ballads, that they were really heartfelt and emotional um, in their delivery, um, both lyrically and vocally. Thank you. Karen, we just started from Chris about playing the antagonist. Um, you're the love interest of our people. Can you define the character and the relationship to uh, Christina's character? Um, well, Jack is. You know, he, he's so much, he represents so much of what Chris, Christina or Ali represented when she first got there. And when Jack first got there, he had that same, he was on that same path. But he let fears and his doubts and his insecurities creep in to the point where it ended up paralyzing him. And, you know, so he got comfortable being a bartender. He got comfortable being a fiancé. And being the person, you know, out of the limelight, when he finally meets Allie and gives her a place to live and gives her a job, he all of a sudden has a new breath of life, and you know, she changes him for the better. I think. And their relationship, I don't know. You'll have to define that on your own. Question <laughs> mark. Sure. <laughs> Sticking to that topic, um, who's Tess? Well, Tess is kind of the mother. Tess is the, Tess is the one that worries about all the girls, and Tess is the one that's... Um, go, Tess is going through a crisis of her own, because she is trying to do things that she's not able to do. She's able to run the club, you know, with the girls and Sean. She's able to do that, but she's tried to do the finances, and she's just not good at that, and so she's losing everything. Trying to keep it from the girls, trying to hold on to everything. It's like having a bunch of chicks, and everyone's trying to get away. So, um, and, and also, when Allie comes in, first she's just annoyed, and then I think she's frightened, and, and it's hard. That's why they have an antagonistic relationship at some point, because she realizes that if she's going to do the right thing for the club, then she's going to have to step away from the thing that she loves and put this young girl, you know, put all of her investment into this young girl, which is like giving up her dream and stepping over and then putting all of her love into this girl and letting the club be first and not her own passions and her own, you know, her own dream. She kind of goes, all right, I had my time and now it's over. Question from the gentleman on the right side, and moving up to the left. Hi, I'm going to get a question for Cher. Uh, probably a hard question, but can you explain um, what does music mean to you in your everyday life? Is it for you more something like something like a job, or is it a way of living, and you can't live without it when you wake up in the morning? Well, I'm, I'm just going to speak to I'm going to speak to performance, and and. And I have to tell you, there's never a time in my life where I don't go on stage and think, oh my God, I'm so thrilled that when I open my mouth, that comes out. You know, I'm so happy to open my mouth and to be able to sing. I'm so glad that it's like, when I, even when I'm, you know, like when I'm rehearsing for a show and like you're just going through the run through with your band and stuff, it's just so much fun. I wish everyone could know what a blast it is to just stand and open your mouth and music comes out. And I felt that way since I was little, and I don't know, I still feel the same way. <coughs> Thank you. Gentlemen on the left side, then we're moving to you. First of all, on the left side, yeah. Hello, well, welcome in Berlin, and the question goes to Cher. First of all, you look gorgeous today, as usual. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Just say the truth. And my question is, because this is Christina's filming debut, and you're much more experienced, how did you deal with this situation? Because it reminds me of a situation worse when you filmed Silkwood. Well, it reminded me of the same situation. And um, I think the, the thing that I wanted Christina to know, 
and I think that because we didn't know each other, and I think that when you hear the name anybody, but let's just say Cher because that's who I am. Um, whoever is hearing that name who doesn't know the person has lots of concepts that aren't necessarily true about the person. And so what I wanted Christina to know right away, and I sent her a text about this or an email, I don't remember. And, and what I said was, you know, I'm here to support you. I'm here to make you look good. I'm not going to do any backstabbing thing. You know, I, I really am here to make you feel comfortable, and I will always have your back. And, um, and I think that our relationship got, we started with a really good relationship, and I think it, it well, it, it's still today. But I think we went through the whole movie really um, together as a team, you know, never fighting about, you know, who's got the close up, who's, you know, that was never any kind of, was never any kind of a deal with, with us at all. Actually, with any of us. You know, it was always, we were, we had a really good time. We were, we were a bunch of girly girls, and we had a great time. And I just want to say one thing about the set. This set was the most unbelievable place I've ever been in making a film. It was so beautiful, and I had a chance, I did um, Vanity Fair, and I had a chance to go back. It was like going home, because the set was exactly made, like my office was upstairs, and the bathroom was over here, and the bar was back there, and it just always was the same. So when you went on the set, you felt like you were going into a real place. And I think that Stephen created something that was unbelievable. It's, it's so beautiful, and I think they captured it in the film. And that's probably not your question, but that's all my answer. <laughs> Thank you very much. Gentlemen, right here with the glasses. Uh, Fred and Magazine, hi, she got a question to share. Um, uh, this is a strong uh, showbiz lady, a classy showbiz lady. I'd like to know if you were, the way you played the character, if you were inspired by classic Mae West. <laughs> no, I wasn't, I actually was inspired by myself. I wasn't inspired by Mae West, but you know what? You know, I think that, you know, I met Mae West once, and boy, she was something. So, and I think we're all inspired by all the women that, we, that we've seen in our lives. Like, I can go back to Barbara Stanwyck or, you know, Judy Garland. And all those people inspire us, and then we, while we're doing the thing that we do, inspire other girls that are coming up that think, oh, I like that person, or I'd like to do that. You know, I, I think that anyone you meet that you respect or that touches your heart, you know, propels you into doing something else. Thanks. The gentleman in the back, and then oh, yes, the, the, the right. I'm going to start again a question to uh, Christina and to Cher. Um, in the movie, the situation between the both of you is quite clear. There is the legend on the one side and the new girl in town on the other side. So when you two had like um, times when camera is off, uh, did you have the chance or the time to talk about like um, careers and stuff? Although you're long enough in the business to know a lot of things by yourself, but did you talk about careers and did you learn kind of something from each other? Well, I'd like to start by answering that. I mean. When Cher comes on the set, she doesn't even have to open her mouth for me to learn something from her. She, her energy is just so calm and so warm and supportive and uh, down to earth that you just can't help but love her and be inspired by her. And um, she really did take me under her wing. I couldn't think of a better person to, you know, star in this film with uh, other than Cher just because she's... I mean, besides being an icon, she's just such a strong woman and force to be reckoned with in this business that stood the test of time, and um, I can only look up to that. And yes, we had many times um, offset when we, well, well, when we were able to have some nice girl talk. I won't say what, but <laughs> we did sometimes talk about love and relationships and just life in general, and, and um, you know, just her energy that she exuded really inspired me and taught me a lot. Um, but uh, the day actually where I had the most fun with her bonding offset was one where we bonded also on screen whenever there's a scene that she does my makeup in. And uh, that was a great day. Now you want me to answer it? <laughs> okay. You know, we, we got along great from the, the first moment. And the thing that I, that I loved about Christina in, in the, the movie was because I didn't really know her. I never had 
been around her. I'd seen her, of course, but didn't know her. And so we met when she was the young Allie, and, and I just thought she was so adorable and so beautiful and really with more energy and more commitment. She had so much commitment to this film and she worked so hard and um, we just, we really did get along. It's like when I went to Silkwood, you know, and Meryl was like, the first thing she said to me was, I'm so happy you're here. And, and so I think that we, we, always, we always worked well together, we always trusted each other. And, um, and and so I just I love that thing about her that she was you know willing to trust and, and game for anything. Last two questions, the lady in the red jacket and then the gentleman in the red. My name is Anna. I'm from newspaper, and the question was to Christina: um, What was it like to put the focus on dancing and not singing while filming? That's a good question. Um, very painful on my toes. I've never approached dancing in the way that I did for this film. Um, you know, being a vocalist first and foremost, that was that's always been the most important thing for me. Having my mic in my hand, not doing one of those little headset pieces and really, you know, going full throttle with my vocals. Um, but for this movie, you know, my comfort zone was a little bit taken away from me. There was no microphone and, um, you know, I had to step into a situation where I was with a bunch of professional dancers who do nothing but dance 24 hours a day, going from gig to gig, doing it since they've been little and brought up dancing and, um, you know, having to go in there and look like I fit in. So in many ways I was, um, you know, definitely out of my comfort zone and had my moments of you know, hesitation about what I could and couldn't do, but um, but I went in and I, I worked really, really hard, a lot of hours, but I have to say we did have some great choreographers um, aboard who taught me a tremendous amount, and um, the technique is what I really walked away with. Um, a form and a technique and a confidence that I didn't have before as a dancer, but, but it was a lot of hard work and a lot of hours. Last question from the gentleman on the right hand side. Mark Spiegel from German Public Radio. It's a question that maybe all five of you can, can answer or have an opinion to. Uh, the movie has been nominated for three Golden Globes, including two for best song. Uh, which song should win? What do you think? <laughs> There's one of Cher. If, if my song doesn't win, then I want Christina to win. <laughs> <laughs> Vice versa. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> so congratulations again on the Golden Globe nominations. Thank you very much for being in Berlin. Vielen Dank für Ihre Frage. Have a wonderful time in Winter Wonderland and all the very best for with us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Claire, Claire, Stephen, Christina.